William F. Bateman. Okay. And what's your birth date? March 10th, 1945. Okay, so you just had a birthday like two weeks ago, right? Yes, a sir. Two weeks ago. Yeah, 96. Happy birthday. Where were you born? Born in Baltimore, Maryland. How long did you live in Baltimore? I was in Baltimore for about eight years. I went through high school there. And uh, we moved, I think, in 1938 okay. to 46. Where'd you go from there? From there, I went to the Marine Corps. Went to the Marine Corps in uh, 1943 and served till 46. World War Two. Well, tell me, walk me through your years of service in World War Two and the Marine Corps. Um, where'd you do your training? Okay. Well, the basic training was at Paris Island, uh, South Carolina. And from there, I went to North Carolina, Camp Lejeune, the radio school. And from uh, Camp Lejeune, after graduating uh, radio school, I went to California, served for six, six weeks in training. Then went overseas in October of uh, 43. I came back in January of 46. Okay. Where'd you go when you first Went to the Pacific. I went to the Pacific and I went to New Caledonia, where uh, I was assigned to First Marine Division, New Caledonia. And then I joined the First Marine Division in, uh, I think, November of uh, 43. First Marine Division? Right. Um, what specific unit do you remember? Well, I was in the 1st Marines, 2nd uh, Battalion, uh, radio, radio School, and 2nd uh, Battalion, 1st Marines. That's what I joined. I was a PFC. What, uh, what do you remember about New Caledonia? I remember it was awfully warm there. And, uh, being in the South Pacific uh, around Thanksgiving and uh, quite humid. And uh, I knew it was just a matter of time till I was assigned from New Caledonia someplace. And it was the was there any action going on at that time? Not, no, the, uh, the Guadalcanal was over. Raised and taken that in uh, 1942. And uh, so there's really not too much action. Although, when I joined the, the First Marines, we, we, left. we went to New Guinea and then. Uh, and then we got ready for combat, and we landed on, uh, and our next battle was Peleliu. That one you don't forget. That one came out in, in September of, uh, 30, 34. 44? Yeah. And, uh, made a lot of casualties on Peleliu. I think our casualty rate was like 70% and uh, I I lost two commanding officers there and uh, I think our casualties in, in, in our division was uh, 75% yeah. of the that's, that's what I've heard yeah it was a, it was a tough operation and uh, we, we were only there 
for 15 days because we didn't have anybody left in our outfit, you know. So. But in those uh, 15 days, I saw an awful lot of action. Uh, the uh, first real time we had some counteroffensive, you know. And, uh, the other islands were very simple compared to this one. And uh, we were attacked by Japanese tanks there. And, and we lost a lot of men. But it was a good campaign. It was finally over and we took it, took the airstroke. It was a small island, it was only six miles long, but, but it was right outside of uh, the Philippines and a uh, good location for the, the Air Corps. Did you spend a lot of time actually kind of dug in and fighting, or were you trying, I guess, I'm sure you were trying to advance to the well, airfield and other places? As I remember, Bill, the first day, but when we, on the small boats, it was the first time we had shells going over our head while we landed and uh, realized we were really in combat. And there was a lot of killing on the beach. And our mission the first day was to go to the edge of the airport mm -hmm. and dig in. And which we did. And we lost a lot of men. And we got to the edge of the airport and thought everything was great there. We could see all the way across. And Shortly after that, uh, we were attacked by Japanese tanks. And uh, I called back to the major, let him know we were attacked by Japanese tanks. And he, he said, don't tell me, they're already here. And uh, so that was pretty interesting. But they knocked them all out. And uh, then the next day, we took the airport. And the major, or the uh, captain I was with, Captain Escorta, told me to stay at the edge of the airport because I had a lot of heavy gear and he didn't think I could keep up. So I said, yes, sir. So then the radio beeped and it was the major calling for the captain. He's out on the airport. He says, well, where are you? He told me to stay here. He said, well, get your ass out there and find him. <laughs> that was my first mission alone on the airport, so. But uh, I found some dead Marines and a FIM tank, and uh, we had a shortage of water at that time because the water that came ashore had been in gasoline tanks and uh, it wasn't good for drinking. So uh, when I was on the airport, I was looking for water. I found this tank, an amphib that was shot up. There's two dead Marines in there and uh, I found some pineapple juice. I filled up my canteen with that. And then went on to find the, uh, the captain, which I did in about 20 minutes. He was dug in. They were pinned out with a machine gun fire. And uh, then the next thing that was happening was the captain says, we're going to attack. And you could hear the bullets go run over our head, you know, from machine gun fire. So a sergeant said to the captain, excuse me, captain, he said, what if I send two men out to the left and two men out to the right? And they'll get that machine gun, and then we can go. The captain said, let's do that. Uh, Pretty interesting to me that her ex Canal sergeants tell the captain how to <laughs> run the operation. But anyway, that captain was killed the next day. And, uh, 
Uh, his name was Captain Discordia. So then uh, I was hit with some shrapnel there and I was taken off, off, off the line. And uh, returned to the line about two days later with a First Lieutenant Fournier. Uh, the generals were saying, attack, attack, attack. So we kept moving forward. So finally we looked right down the throat of a four-man machine gun nest. My first lieutenant got killed. And then we got a bazooka man up there and together we knocked out the machine gun nest. So then, that was the end of my mission there. I was taken off the lines. That was it for Pelalu. I left Pelalu probably four days later. With, we probably had 80% casualties. Very bad. How did it make you feel, you know, when you, you see you have well, a lot of casualties? It was my third campaign, and, and really, this is the first one I really got involved in. And uh, I just thought it's going to be tough living through this thing. That's how I felt. <laughs> but I did. And uh, a little disappointed with some of the top officers, but also very appreciative of some of the others. So anyway, we ended up, uh, after 15 days, the 1st Marine Division was pulled out of Helda. And then the rest of the 3rd Marines, I think, took it. And it was hard to take it over. But uh, it was real war. It's, it's what to expect. Lucky to get through it and still have all the arms and legs, but uh, made it through it. A lot of brave men went out. About how many men do you think your unit lost? I think just in radio, I think we lost uh, six or seven of our people. And, uh, you know, we were really a behind a line combat unit, so they lost a lot of people on Pelo. I think probably in the 80s, 90% bracket. So, but we took the island. So, That's a lot of fighting. I, I think they made a mistake going there. But, uh, Because it was off, off the Philippines a couple hundred miles. And I think MacArthur didn't want anybody on his flank, you know, so that's why we went there. So anyway, that was fellow. Then the next battle was the last war in the Pacific, was uh, Okinawa. Yeah, uh, we landed on Okinawa April 1st, 1945. And we took the island, I think, by, uh, by June, about three months. And there was the 1st Marine Division, the 2nd Marines, 3rd Marine, the 6th Marines were there, 27th Army Division, and a few others. And uh, it took about six months and we took Okinawa and that was the last battle of the Pacific. And the war ended when I was on Okinawa. Yeah. Where they uh, dropped the A-bomb in Japan. And uh, 
It was, it was a, a tough battle of Okinawa. It, it, it ran out it was 350 miles from Japan, and uh, Japan threw everything they had. Uh, uh, the Marines and the Army took it. Oh, uh, that's the last battle of the Pacific, last one I was in. So, uh, then, uh, you were there when the war ended. You I said was, like six months, right? Yeah, I was yeah. there for the uh, Japanese surrendered in August, I think, that year. And we stayed there until, uh, I think about October 45. And then, then we went to China, to send a Japanese home okay. from Tinsen, China. And that was our mission. And uh, we went up there, I was there for four months in China. What did you do there? Well, we sent the Japanese soldiers home. A lot of them went undercover. The Chinese would point them out for us so we could get them and send them home. And then most after that, it was liberty every other day. So it was for good liberty, you know, because uh, one dollar American, you could get 6,000 Chinese dollars, which would take you a long way. Yeah. The rickshaw rides for $300 all over town. And there was a lot of good food there that the Chinese had hidden, you know, from the Japanese. Yeah. And they loved the American dollar, so uh, we had a good time there, a good recreation time. I stayed until January, and then went back to the States. I was overseas uh, 20, 27 months. All time four battles. You 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 did a lot. I did a lot, that, yes, sir. How do you feel about your service? Anyone? How do you feel about your? I feel there? good about the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps had a lot of good good men and a lot of good officers. They fought hard for this country, and uh, a lot of men lost their lives, lost a limb, and. Uh, I think that's one of the best experiences I've had in my life is serving for three years of Marine Corps. And uh, met a lot of nice people. And lost a lot of people. But uh, met a friend of mine on the, uh, we were in Peleliu and, uh, or just before Peleliu, and he said, I'll see you after the campaign, he got hit on the beach and lost an eye. I did see him after the campaign, I saw him back in Baltimore. He sat at the bar with a guy from, I also knew who had fought over in Germany, who also lost an eye. So the two of them are sitting there, and fought one on the eastern front and one on the western front. So anyway, that's, that's that's war. <laughs> I interviewed a, another Marine and uh, he lives in Daphne, Alabama. Oh, okay. Uh, near the coast. And uh, he fought a Pele Lou too. Hey. He get hit. Yeah. Uh, his only injury, I think he had a shrapnel wound to his knee. But he was taken care of and You're lucky. Kept, kept going. You're lucky. Yeah. He told about the tanks too. Yeah. Uh, his his squad was in a might have been a, a bomb crater or something. Yeah. They were on the edge. It's on the end of the tanks. One tank came right into the crater. Yeah. He thinks maybe they didn't know there was yeah. a big hole there. Yeah. And, well, they were sacking up. A lot of the, the drivers of the tanks were sacking up. I knew that they, they were going to get knocked off, you know. Mm. Just a matter of time. 
I got drunk and I came across. Uh, and they did get knocked off. And our guys were all dug in at the end of the airport. Our Sherman tanks were dug in. They were drinking some water and they were taking it easy. And too late to get up because the guns were ready to knock them out, you know. Anyway, eventually they were all knocked out. Zuckerman knock them out. Yeah, so that was a. Uh, yeah. Then, like I said, the next day we took the airport. But uh, I got hit there too, and a piece of shrapnel and, uh, hit me in the side. It was pretty well spent. All it did was dug in on the edges, you know, and, mm -hmm. but it didn't go in, so I didn't even report it. I tore up my uniform. So, pretty hard not to get hit over there. <laughs> yeah. So when you came back home, what did you do? Well, when I came back home, I was going to go back to finish high school. And uh, I got an opportunity to go to Chicago and study television. So I went to Chicago and uh, dropped out of school, night school. And uh, studied television for a while. And Doing what? I was just learning about the basics of television and uh, camera work and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then that wasn't for me. I got two jobs part-time, so I dropped out of school there. Then after that, I worked all the rest of my life. And I got, I got with a bread company in Chicago. I worked there for 26 years. And, uh, Got up to be vice president with a company. What company was that? Ford Bacon Company. Yeah, Tip Top Bread. Okay. They're out of New York. And uh, and it was in Chicago I decided to go to McDonald's and leave the Ward Bacon Company. I met Ray Kroc. Signed up for a owner operator in Florida. And they told me it'd be about three years before something opened up. And it was three years. And then I finally got a store in uh, Bartow, Florida. And now it's gone to six stores that I have, and my son runs it. That's the last 48 years. What's, what's your son's name? Robert James Bateman. Okay. Uh, he's a. Uh, the Bateman name is pretty popular because my grandfather immigrated from England to this country in the eighteen eighties, and uh, he was he was a college graduate already, and you had to have a job in this country. Well, he could come here. The only thing he could do was bricks and mortar. So he got a job in St. Louis, the railroad station, put bricks and mortar up. So he immigrated here back in about 1870. And uh, then he finally had a church in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. And he went to Titanic to bring his sister-in-law back. That was a mistake, so he went down to Titanic. Wow. She got off. And uh, so we're pretty proud of the baby name for him. He had eight children, and uh, uh, Robert, Robert, Robert's son is named Robert, too, baby. So, so the baby name goes on. So oh, we're, we're doing fine. How many kids do you have? I have four. Okay. Carol has two. Okay. So we have a nice six family and we have ten grandchildren. So 
I, I, are they mostly in Florida or scattered around? All but all but uh, two adults in Florida, and their children are out in Colorado and uh, Washington State. But most of them are here. Okay, good. Uh, so that's it. That's my story. <laughs> and you're sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, it was a. Uh, it was a story of war, and, uh... I appreciate you, you sharing that with me. I'm glad to share it with you. And I'll so. share it with, um, good. the rest of whoever wants to see it Okay, online. good, good. <laughs> I'm sure That'd some Marines would probably like it. Especially if they were there. Yeah, we had the first Marine Division was the first one to land on Guadalcanal, you know. They took Guadalcanal. So I was with them for a little, I trained on the canal. But uh, they were in every battle of the Pacific almost, you know, the first Marine. Not all the battles, terrible was a terrible battle. Yeah, I just missed that one. What about Iwo Jima? Iwo Jima was a bad one too. And that's what I got uh, on the back of my shirt here. Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny about Iwo Jima. When I joined the first Marine Division, the other option was to go to the second Marine Division, which went in the, in the Iwo Jima. Yeah. Like I missed that one. <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah. Inter interview anybody that was there? Pardon me? Have you interviewed interviewed anybody that was not even here? Have. Um, have you? Um, I remember one for sure. I think it was the second veteran I met. Yeah. Was there. Yeah, that's a terrible campaign. Ah. Well, they were well dug in, you know. Uh, we found that out. Tell We found it out in Okinawa. Uh, and, uh, they were dug in all the way. But when we landed in Okinawa, our mission was across the island and then go north, which we did. All the jabs were south. None of them were north. <laughs> Papers would say Marines go 30 miles, Army goes 100 yards. You know, Army hit all the Japanese. <laughs> but they brought us back. <laughs> I, I try to ask this of most of the veterans that I meet. Um, do your You're 96, and what advice would you maybe have for the younger generations today? Try war? No, just life. Well, I think the younger generation, everybody should serve in the service. At least a year or something, yeah. Get a feel of that. And, and it should be in our our service. I would vote for it, but uh, I think people leaving home for the first time, you know, meeting all these new guys, uh, I think that's great. And the discipline that you get is unbelievable. So, especially in the Marine Corps. <laughs> and nobody so, uh, has ever served. <laughs> I, I believe everybody should get a little bit. At least one year. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't care. I don't think Carol would not sure that said. She doesn't. Uh, we never had that conversation. <laughs> um, she's got a great son. Has great work. And, uh, I, 
I hate to see a guy like that knock off of the surface. <laughs> yeah, me too. But, uh, we never had that discussion. I think uh, here's something else that, that I think is common uh, among the guys I've met is I kind of ask, how do you think you made it through the, the war? And most, all of them simply are very humble about it and, and say that, you know, they're not a hero. It's the ones that didn't make it back are the uh, heroes. That's right. Would you say that too? That's I would say that very much so. Yeah. And, and that they're just, just doing what you were trained to do. Well, some guys just had to do that a little bit extra, you know. They, they got involved in, in what they can handle, you know. And, and there's no way back when you're charging, you go. So, uh, but it's a great experience. I lost a lot of good people. But, uh, Wars are not fun, no matter what I think they are. But surviving is fun. <laughs> you gotta try to keep your head down. Don't be a hero. You know. Just try to do your job. We all did that. And uh, we lost a lot of people. But when you're on offense, a lot different than being on defense. And, uh, and we were on offense all during the war. And, uh, and uh, I had a guy who used to meet me every time we go on a campaign. He'd be on the fan tail of the ship. That's the back end of a ship. He said, Bill, I said, I don't think I'm going to make it through this one. He made every one of them. I saw him after the war. <laughs> he was a, yeah, he was in, in, in Ohio, Perrysville, Ohio. I think he's a uh, police sergeant or something. <laughs> so anyway. Well, thank you so much for for your time and, uh, you're and welcome, definitely sir. thank you for your service.